we are introducing a new way of analyzing and designing systems and that is called the finite state machine approach. This is in contrast to the use case approach that we had used for the library system. And it is applicable where the use case model is not sufficient, is not appropriate. A reasonable example would be the creation of a graphical user interface. To see why we need such an approach, let's consider a simple microwave. This is not uh, as sophisticated as the microwave you might have in, at home, but uh, this would do the job for our purpose, for learning the finite state machine approach. This simple microwave works uh, like most microwaves in the sense when it is, the oven is not in use and the door is closed, it is, uh, the, the, the light is uh, off. And when you open the door, the light stays on. And if you are cooking, the cooking ends, let's assume. So that's a bit unlike a typical microwave. So we are trying to keep it very simple. The cooking gets interrupted. And uh, there are, there is a button to cook. So if you press the cook button, and if the door is closed and the oven is not operating, so if the microwave is idle and the door is closed, and if you press the cook button, it activates the oven for one minute and the light is on while it is cooking. So it doesn't really cook for a time that can be set by the user. It always cooks for one minute. If you press the button again, the cook button again, and if it is cooking, then it adds one minute to the timer. So you, may, you might have started cooking and waited for 30 seconds and then pressed the cook button again, then it adds one minute to the 30 seconds left. So it is going to have a cooking time of one and a half minutes now. And you can keep on pressing the cook button and it will keep on adding more and more time in units of one minute. The microwave should display the number of seconds remaining for the cooking to end. And uh, as we said before, if you open the microwave, when the oven is operating, the oven is off. And when the cooking ends, normally, I mean, whatever you mean, uh, whenever it ends because the time has uh, elapsed, the light goes off. And uh, if you have, uh, if you press the cook button when the door is open, it doesn't do anything. The oven doesn't do anything. It has no effect. So if you think about this kind of a system, the use case model is not a good way of analyzing it or designing it. You can't really think of a set of use cases for a microwave. It cannot be characterized as standard business processes. How do you work? I mean, with a microwave, you might, uh, open the door, put some dish in, and then press the, close the door, and then press the cook button, and then after 20 seconds, open the microwave, maybe you will stir the dish, put that back in, uh, close the door, again press the cook button, and then add one minute, then again take it out after a few seconds, and it can go on and on like that. There is no specific sequence of actions that you can foresee. 
Or let's take the example of uh, using an interactive program like a browser. What do you do? You, you might type in a URL and hit enter. You see a website uh, displayed and then you might uh, scroll or you might go ahead and uh, click on a link or you might search for something and go away from this particular web page. And there is no specific sequence of actions that would constitute a use case. The system responds to events that happen on the keyboard or on the mouse right when the user clicks on the mouse or the, the keyboard the system does some things and then the system also responds to things that happen outside for example when it gets a web page it displays the web page on the screen so there are so many things that can change the behavior of the program there could be stuff coming from the users it could be coming from a network or it could be things that are occurring within the system itself for example in the case of a microwave when the timer goes off the microwave ends cooking right so there are so many events that happen and the system is responding to the events so this kind of a system cannot be analyzed or designed using the use case model the use case model is appropriate when you have a set of business processes that are well defined and the number of business processes is not too large here it is impossible to characterize the interaction between the user and the system in terms of use cases the number of states is not infinite whereas in a library system the number of states is potentially infinite you can have all kinds of situations for example you can think of the state as consisting of the values for all the bits of all the objects for example if a book is checked out that is a state if the book is returned that is another state for the book and you consider all possible combinations of all the member objects book objects hold objects transaction objects etc etc and then you have an explosion in the number of possible states but that is not the case here in a microwave or in a clothes washer or a dryer or a refrigerator or an air, air conditioner or, or any device that or most devices i would say that we interact on a daily basis so how do you model such a system this is called finite state modeling and we are thinking of the system as a finite state machine we said we have a bunch of events things that happen they are called events and the system is in a certain state at any given point in time for example in the case of a microwave it could be cooking it could be that the cooking cooking was uh, interrupted or the cooking terminated uh, uh, normally those kinds of things then the machine has certain output actions for example a microwave would um, have an output action like turning on the light or displaying the number of seconds remaining to cooking and 
when you have a microwave or any finite state machine, you tend to associate with it a start state. For example, for a microwave, you could say that uh, initially the microwave has its door closed and it is not cooking. At least that is not that is the case when you buy the microwave, right? When you purchase a microwave, it is closed and it is not cooking at that point. So that could be thought of as a start state for a microwave. Or if you have a word processor uh, and uh, what is its initial state? You could say that initial state is, it is remaining on disk, it is not even activated. But let's consider the situation when it is activated. When it is activated, what it does is it is waiting um, for a command from you and it is perhaps displaying a blank screen all the menu, or at least some of the menu items are enabled, that could be the initial state. Then there is something called a state transition. If you are in a certain state, or rather the machine is in a certain state, and if you have an event happening, the machine goes into a new state, or it may stay in the same state and produce some output. As an example, if you have the microwave door closed and you press the cook button, so the state is that the door is closed and not cooking, the microwave is idle, door is closed, and you are pressing the cook button. The event is pressing of the cook button the current state is door is closed and the microwave is idle. What will the microwave do? It'll start cooking. So cooking would be the new state. So that is a state transition. You are going from the idle door closed state to the cooking state. And there could be some output action associated with it you might actually have the light turn on. So that would be an output action. So when you have a microwave or any finite state machine, you would have a bunch of state transitions saying, if the device is in this state and if this event happens, this is what is going to, be, this, is, this would be the new state and this would be the output action. Those things together, describes the finite state machine. So for a microwave, this could be the way the system behaves. So we, how do the states transition? That is expressed as a state transition table. We, the, as the name implies, it is a table. It has a bunch of rows and a bunch of columns. In the rows, we put the states. One state is idle door closed, idle door open, cooking, interrupted, and completed. The events are open door, closed door, press cook, clock ticks, and timer. Now, I suggest that you read the handout provided. It is a new version of the chapter on finite state machines. And that has some discussion on how to discover the states in a finite state machine approach, how to discover the events and how to fill in these tables. So I suggest, I recommend that you read the new version of the chapter that is supplied on D2L. That will definitely help you. So let's get back to this state transition table. So we have five states, idle door closed, idle door open, cooking, 
this is cooking interrupted and this is cooking completed normally normally meaning the timer has gone to zero there are three things the user can do open the door close the door press the cook button there are two things that can happen internally the clock ticks let's say every second and the timer runs out so what happens when the microwave is in a certain state and a certain event occurs these entries here show that when the microwave is idle and the door is closed if that is the state if you open the door the new state would be idle and door open right you open the door and if you close the door of course it is physically impossible but if you could do it it would be idle door closed if you press cook and if the door, the door was closed right so it starts cooking if the clock ticks it doesn't really matter it it is ignored basically so it is idle door closed the state is still the same and if the timer runs out i don't know what that means but if you ever get that signal it doesn't really affect anything it would be idle door closed that much we know and when the door is open if you open the door again that is a physical impossibility for most of us and uh, this would be idle door open if you close the door you go from idle door open to idle door closed if you press cook it is ignored idle door open clock ticks and timer runs out are also ignored then if it is cooking state and if you open the door cooking is interrupted we go into the interrupted state if you close the door well that is quite impossible because the door is already closed so it continues cooking if you press cook it continues cooking but of course what is not written here is that one minute is added to the microwave i again suggest that you read the new version of the chapter that throws more light into all these things if the clock ticks while cooking we continue cooking but one second less right for the cooking to end and uh, the timer runs out means it is idle door closed and uh, if you interrupted the cooking then you will not be able to open the door because the door is already open so but uh, we can we can write that uh, the new state is idle door open if you close the door the new state is idle door closed press the cook is ignored clock ticks is ignored timer runs out is ignored and when cooking is completed if you open the door the door opens close the door the door is already closed if you press cook it can starts cooking again uh, if the clock ticks or timer runs out there is nothing more to do it is already completed so that is the state transition table the same information can be depicted using a state transition diagram and this is the way that you draw this in uml the states are shown with rounded rectangles rounded corners and each rectangle of course is a state and you go from one state to another or stay in the same state when events occur so events are shown through or by it just like this i will show you just one or two examples here the information is exactly the same as the state transition table there are two equivalent ways of expressing the same idea if the door is closed and you open the door so the door, so here we are here 
the door is closed, idle, and you open the door, the new state is idle door open. This is the event, open door. Or as a second example, if the system is cooking, if the microwave is cooking and the clock ticks, it remains in the cooking state. But if the timer runs out from cooking, we go to the completed state. And in the completed state, if you press the cook button, we are back to cooking. So notice that there are five states here, just as the other ones. There is no new information here, but for some people, seeing a picture might be easier. Now, here, if you look at this very carefully, uh, we are not going to get into the details of this. Interrupted is the same as idle door open and completed is equivalent to idle door closed. So we don't really need five states. We can get away with three states. That calls for a simpler machine. A, a decrease in the complexity of the system, probably an easier implementation. So instead of having five states, we have three states. And this describes the behavior of the microwave. The number of events is still five, but the number of states is three. And uh, this last slide summarizes some of the things that we said earlier about use case modeling and finite state modeling. The library system, you cannot list all the states. As I said, uh, the number of states is potentially infinite. And the, but the ways in which you can interact with the system are limited. Whereas that is not the case in the microwave. The number of states is not very large, but there is an infinite number of ways in which the user can interact with the microwave. So those are the characteristics that you should look for in a system to decide whether the use case model is appropriate or whether the finite state machine approach is appropriate.